Hey, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. You guys, you guys uh, picking me up, hearing me well. Hopefully everything is going well. Boop, 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 boop. Happy Bowtie Friday. So uh, today I'm here to show off Scaffold ETH, but uh, I want to dive in and just kind of start with just like how to get started, what to do, where to go. So uh, let's let's jump over to the screen share here. And I've got uh, uh, just ethereum.org open, right? A good first place to start. So the reason why I wanted to go here is just to show you this is a great place to get started. You can dive in and learn so much here. You can get a lot of the why. And then when you're ready for the how, there's a couple different great places to go. First, uh, if we go to learn by coding here, uh, a couple of great things. Remix, you can pull up in a browser and start tinkering with your Solidity. Also, uh, ETH build. I wanted to make sure to shill that while while I'm uh, here. It's basically a, a, a tinkering platform that lets you kind of wire up some kind of uh, Web3 thing and, and kind of learn what's going on. Here's the Byzantine general. Here's General Bob. He's trying to uh, attack Friday at dawn. Here's one of his soldiers working away on hashing and trying to find leading zeros. Awesome. So that's ETH build. Check it out. You can tinker around, learn a lot of the fundamentals. Then if you skip over to uh, setting up your local environment, also a lot of great options that everybody has uh, already kind of mentioned today, but I'm going to be zooming in specifically on Scaffold ETH. So Scaffold ETH is... Let me shoot over here. Scaffold ETH is a great way to let you get to tinkering. It's going to zoom you in on having your smart contract uh, over here and having your front end over here and being able to tinker with it directly and 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 right away. And that's the key. The, this, this stack takes so long. The Web3 stack takes so long to set up. And there's so many traps where you can end up getting something wrong, having these errors that don't make sense. So Scaffold ETH kind of comes with everything you need to get started, but it's also like production ready eventually. So don't, don't think of it as like a weaker tool. It does have a lot of things in it that you can carve out before you go to production, but it's, it's, it's going, it's production ready when you get there. Let me, let me make sure I say that. So let me back up a little bit. When you're getting started, just Google ETH speed run. ETH speedrun. If you Google speedrun ETH, ETH speedrun, ETH dev speedrun, any of those, you're going to find at that top article is just basically uh, like a storm of links that I've created to get you started. But the key is to start tinkering with Solidity. So it says grab scaffold ETH and, and start learning how to iterate on your contract. So that's what we're going to do first. Let's bring this with us. So I've, I've done the install because it does take like five minutes because it's pretty big, uh, but I've, I've already done a, a yarn install and a yarn start. And that's, that's the first steps within the repo. Let me just pull that repo up real quick so you can see the, there, there's the start, here's the quick start right here. So you'll clone down scaffold ETH, you'll yarn install and you'll yarn chain and that will bring up hard hat. Then you'll run yarn start, and that will bring up your dev server. Now, finally, when you're ready to go, it's a yarn deploy. Now watch what happens here. So I've got this uh, kind of basic contract, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this console log. So we'll have a console log in our contract. Actually, let me comment it out and do a deploy first. Okay, so here we go. We're deploying. Ooh, I didn't mean to do the reset there. We're doing it anyways. Now watch for a hot reload over here on the right side. There we go. See that? I got a new contract on the right. Let's do it again. So let's let's go ahead and put the console log in there and let's do a yarn deploy. No reset. Get out of here. Get out of here. Here we go. Compiling, deploying. All right. Did you see that? Did you see that reload over here? Let's let's change something real quick. Let's add some exclamation points and let's do another deploy. I know I'm really hammering this home, but I want you to watch for this contract to reload and see that this is hot reloading. I'm deploying contract after contract and it's hot reloading in the front end. I've got my smart contract that I'm editing here, and I've got a front end that's auto adapting to my smart contract. So we added in a console log. Let's let's watch for that here in a little bit. It'll be over here, but over here on the right. Now let's let's look at the front end for a second. Uh, we've got an account in the top right. We've got our smart contract here. 
uh, if, if I try to interact with my smart contract, it's probably going to yell at me and say, I don't have any funds. So you need to grab some funds from the faucet. Now, notice we're not connecting MetaMask or anything yet. When you land on Scaffold ETH, you get a burner wallet generated for you. And that's really, really handy for testing. Basically, private key and local storage. It's signing transactions automatically. As soon as you hit a button, it signs a transaction and ship it, ships it. Super, super useful. Okay, so I'm going to grab funds from the faucet. Now I've got 26 bucks. Now I should be able to set the purpose in our contract, right? Let's, let's look at our contract real quick again. We've got a purpose string, and then we've got a function called set purpose that lets us set that string. And when it sets it, it does a little console log thanks to hard hat. Let's see what happens when we run it. So send, there we go. I just made a transaction against my, my contract and I can see the console log over here and we see that the purpose has updated. Okay, so now you're kind of getting a feel for how this is going to work. You're going to you're going to be changing your solidity. You're going to be tinkering around with your solidity. You're going you're going to try something new over here. You're going to deploy it. You're going to have it show up in your front end over here and then you're going to be able to interact with it. Boom, there it is. Look at those extra, extra exclamation points. Okay, so this is like this is the base of Scaffold ETH. This is where you get started. This is this is your your license to learn. You've, you've got everything and you can quickly iterate on solidity and learn new concepts. So uh, real quick, let's try, uh, let's try one thing. Let's try, uh, I was gonna set the purpose. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Let's follow, the, let's follow the speed run, right? So Ethereum dev speed run, you've got Scaffold ETH, you're ready to start tinkering. It says, go to Solidity by example and follow these uh, different uh, uh, topics, right? So I, I'm not gonna get too deep into Solidity, but let's, let's just, let me just do an example of what I'm talking about. So it says primitives and data types, right? You need to get in here and learn some primitives and data types. What's a UN8 versus a UN256? Well, we can explain it all day, but it's much easier. Like Patrick said, if you just get in and do it, like get in here and tinker with it. So let's just grab this U, this U8 or whatever, and let's throw it in here and let's do a yarn deploy and let's see what happens, right? Oh, well, I'm guessing we're gonna see a new uh, counter variable, basically, yeah, U8, and it's gonna be set to one. Well, that's not very interesting, but it's a good start. Let's maybe add a function to decrement it. Let's set it to maybe five. And why are we naming it U8? That doesn't make sense. Let's name it counter, right? So super simple code. We're going to make a counter. Uh, and then we're going to create a decrement function. We're going to make it public. And what's it going to do? Counter minus minus, right? All right, ship it. Let's go. Let's see if this does what we want it to do, right? So, so thinking of this, this layer of Ethereum and, and we're deploying our smart contract and it's actually pretty expensive to update our smart contract because when we, when we say hello world here or when we say decrement, it actually crafts a transaction, puts it into the mempool, gets mined into the block and then everyone on the whole network has to run that and update our piece. So it's like hella redundant, right? If you're thinking of a back end and a front end, but it's also kind of like an embedded controller. We kind of, our smart contract is like this little embedded controller. We want to be thinking about this, like understand that there's things going on with the bits underneath the sheets and we need to know what they're doing, right? And, and, and as I decrement this, what's going to happen if I get to zero? Well, actually it's going to catch, right? Because we're using Solidity 8.4. It's going to tell me, yo, that would, that would cause underflow. But if this was unchecked, if we were using a, an old version of Solidity, I think this is how I, I do it. I have no idea if this is the right syntax, but I can find out if it's the right syntax by banging it in here and doing a yarn deploy and see what happens. Totally worked first try. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so now we're gonna decrement this thing and something bad is gonna happen. Basically, we're not going to have that check on if it overflows. And so when I click that, oh, overflow, if that was a token balance, we'd be screwed. Someone else would have all of our money because they figured out how to decrement. They figured out how to subtract one from zero. So what I wanted to dive into here is what if this is a UN256 instead of a UN8? So with eight bits, we saw it roll over to 255. What's it going to do if it's at 256? Well, it should be a huge number, and we think that, but let's test our assumptions and let's try it. Let's poke at this. It should be really easy to try this. 
give us a new contract, let us decrement down to zero, and then boom, gigantic number, biggest number you can track with 256 bits right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, that is what I mean by you can get in here and tinker, right? Let's get let's get UNs out of the way. We, we understand them now. What's the next primitive and data type? Oh man, an address? Wow, they're just like pasting that address straight in. Well, I can do that. Let's see, let's copy my address here with this handy little copy. Look at this nice little component. Anytime you put an address in Scaffold ETH, it's got a little copy button next to it. It's got a little blocky preview. If you click it, it takes you to a block explorer. Isn't that handy? So I'm gonna copy this address and guess what? I'm gonna paste it right into my code. So we need, what, an address? We'll make it public, we'll call it owner. And we'll set it equal to that. Just paste it in raw and go, right? Go ahead and yarn deploy. Let's make sure it works. Let's go. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Now the owner matches, right? There we are. We're the owner. Okay. Now let's 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 write a quick require statement. Let's require that the message.sender, and by the way, uh, message.sender, if you're in the E, the speed run, it's probably going to say something about learn the global variables. You're really going to want to get Solidity Globals down and understood and have this available for you when you get in here. But real quick, you've got time, uh, you've got uh, message.sender, message.value, block.number, block.timestamp. There's, there's all of our global variables. We're using message.sender here to say the person who accesses this function needs to be the owner. So we only want to let the owner get in here, not the owner. Boop, boop, boop. And let's do this. Let's do this even weirder. Let's, let's, let's show that transactions are atomic. I'm going to put this down at the bottom because I'm a psychopath. So there we go. So we've got required down at the bottom and that's gonna, basically it's gonna set the purpose and then it's gonna check to see if we're the owner. And if we are the owner, it's gonna revert everything and it's gonna roll back, right? Now be careful here about re-entrancy and other things. Like I'm just doing this as a demo. Don't freak out too much, but let's put that require statement at the bottom to show the atomicity of a transaction. Now we should deploy that. We should be the owner. I'm not sure if it went, it must've gone. Let's, and let's make sure, let's set hello world and let's make sure that we can set it. Okay, so the good guy was able to set the purpose. The require statement uh, worked as far as we can tell, but how do we test the sad path? How do we test the attacker? Well, with scaffold ETH, since you have these accounts that just get created on page load, I'm going to go to localhost 3000 from an incognito window. Now we've kind of have like blue and green guy over here and we have purple guy over here. So blue and green guy, I'm going to load up with some gas and he's a bad guy, right? Bad guy. Now, hopefully this doesn't work. If it does, I've done something wrong, but it didn't work. It, it blocked him. It said not the owner, right? You get that nice feedback. You get that uh, that pop-up. You, you, you basically audit that line of code from your front end as you're tinkering. And that's the point here is you can change your solidity and you can get a feel for it. And then you can have the front end and you can poke at it and you can test your assumptions assumptions, and you can try things. I think traditionally uh, smart contract apps are basically built by one super nerd writes a smart contract it goes to, uh, someone writes a bunch of tests. We were talking about tests earlier. Then it goes to an auditor. And then months later, it's all audited and ready to go. And then some jabroni builds the front end for it. And that's fine. That's a good way to get started. But there's a lot that you can learn by interacting with your contract live. Being able to learn Solidity and, and really like, even if you know Solidity well, being able to have that Solidity kind of iterate iteratable where I can kind of tinker with it and test my assumptions on the front end is actually very, very, very powerful. Okay, so our, our bad guy is not able to set the purpose. One other thing I wanted to zoom in and just show accounts real quick. What if I grab this dude's wallet and paste in this guy's address? Actually, let's not even do that. Let's, let's show ENS. Let's go Vitalik.eth, right? Let's send Vitalik some, let's send Vitalik $10 of our testnet ETH. Send, look at that, isn't that nice? Your, your address input component gave you the nice ENS resolution, blocky preview, QR code scanner, our, our dollar sign input, right? Even though we're sending ETH right now, it's going to Uniswap. It's figuring out the price of ETH and it's giving you a nice little dollar. If you wanna send point zero zero one ETH, you're welcome to. But if you wanna switch that back to dollars and send it in dollars, you can do that. And Scaffold ETH is gonna have that for you out of the box. So anything you build is gonna have all these components ready to go for you. Okay, so 
Now you can tinker. Now you can bring up scaffolding. Hopefully this is, this is like a really good starting point for you going back to the speed run. So we looked at primitives, right? Look at mappings next, next, look at structs, look at modifiers, look at arrays of structs. When you can start creating like a proposal system where you have structs and arrays of structs, and you can put all those in, that's like, that's like 95% of all the smart contracts I've seen right there. Like you, you've got basically the syntax and the skills to build the thing. Now it's about honing your skills and getting better. Uh, learn, learn events, learn inheritance, learn payable functions, learn fallbacks, all of that stuff. Just get the feel for the syntax and understand it. But like Patrick said, you got to get your hands dirty. you got to get in there. Once you've kind of tinkered with it, if you're a good programmer, you're going to pick up Solidity and like quickly, like 48 hours. Like it's really not that complicated. Again, think of it like that little in embedded controller that you're programming and you're deploying this little microchip to 10,000 different machines and all of these machines on the network, like this dope ETH2 node right here that's showing some errors, I think. Oops. All of these nodes on the network are going to have your little embedded controller and anybody can access them, right? It's like this vending machine in the sky that anybody can access. So, but think about, think about it like this embedded controller. You're building this smart contract. You want to really understand what those bits are doing. It's very expensive to do a write. It's very cheap to do a read because you can read from everywhere. But really like Ethereum is the greatest massive multiplayer RPG ever created. And you have the ability to create on top of it very, very easily. Like Ethereum is built for innovation. And this is a great way to innovate. You can sit here and tinker with your solidity. You can see it in the front end. By the time you're done, by the time you're ready to go, you, there's an example UI, right? You'll carve, you'll carve out this kind of scaffolding and you'll build your example UI pretty simple. Let's, let's try to set the, the, oh, this is going to fail because I'm not the owner. Okay. Let's go back over to this guy. Let's go to the example URL. Hey, 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 now I, now basically I just have a form and I'm tracking the form. And when I click this button, it's going to call a function on the contract. And all of that is there for you in Scaffold ETH. Uh, the front end is using React. I think we talked about it earlier. And why? Because like 80% of devs, devs are using it. If you want to use Svelte or Vue or something else, I will fund you to create a version of Scaffold ETH that is like that. We're trying to make it very, uh, you know, like, as agnostic as possible to things, but we had to just pick the ones that everybody was using at first. Very, very open to tons of different branches. But here's your front end. That example UI I was just tinkering with is right here. Where's that button? Let's find that button right here, right? Here's the button I just clicked. Uh, where is it? Yep, on click. And what do we do? We go to write contracts, your contract, and we call set purpose with some purpose that we're tracking. So it should be pretty straightforward how a lot of this stuff works. The example UI is there for you to figure out. Uh, okay, I, in the closing minute, I want to give you basically homework. I'm sorry, but developer Anon, G, GM Anon, it's time to get to work. Uh, get, sent, get the syntax down get your license to learn, and then get started on the branches of Scaffold ETH. So Scaffold ETH has hundreds of branches. If you go to Scaffold ETH here and you click here and you type something in, you're going to find it. I heard someone talking about factory deploying. You want a proxy factory? There it is. Uh, you, wanna, you want something with chain link? Looks like we got five different chain link branches. You want to learn commit reveal? You want to learn NFTs? You want to learn aping into DeFi? What's that contract look like? You can find it in the branches of Scaffold ETH. Okay, so uh, the, the uh, last thing I will talk about, once you, once you get through uh, getting the, the, the language, once you start finding the simple NFT branch and you tweak it, maybe you make it so the buyer has to pay the gas to mint, then you get in and you've got challenges. After that, then there's the build guild. And I'm incentivizing builders to create more of these cool branches with Scaffold ETH. And I'm funding developers by selling some of my uni and streaming ETH to them. So if you want to coordinate, collaborate with uh, me on Scaffold ETH, check out the Build Guild. And then we're spinning that up even more for the Moonshot Collective. If you check out moonshotcollective.space, we're zooming in and we're building coordination and governance experiments on Ethereum, and we're just funding other devs to build that. I think that's probably all of my time. I, I, would, I would keep talking forever, but I think I'm about out of time. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Happy Bowtie Friday. Check out Scaffold ETH. There's a whole curriculum here. If you Google ETH speedrun, speedrun ETH, 
Hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> am, am I done? Am I out? I think, I think you gotta be done now. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank Austin. You. That, that, that was so much fun. I'll say I love slides, but it's so refreshing to see a talk that is just pure demo and pure fun. Uh, there's a lot of magic in that talk. I, I took on a couple of quotes that because I'm a psychopath and uh, some jabroni <laughs> builds the front end for it. So true. So true. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like having heard you, uh, I instantly get the power of scaffold ETH and uh, I, I already put the homework on my calendar. <laughs> Google ETH speed run. That's the way to go.